Father, we thank you this morning. God, we are grateful, oh God, that you have spared us and you brought us together again to give your name praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for your son, Jesus, oh God, who made it possible that we might come boldly to your throne. And at the throne, oh God, we can tell you thank you. At the throne, oh God, we worship you this morning. At your throne, oh God, we bow our heart to you. We surrender our will to you, oh God. And we lift our voices, oh God, and in praise and adoration to you. God, for we are grateful because you are God. You're our creator, oh God. You're the one that made us in your image after your likeness, oh God. And, and Father, you know everything about us, oh God. And God, we thank you because you love us. Your love is everlasting to us, oh God. And we thank you for how you blessed us, oh God, to live to see, oh God, the last month in this year, oh God. We thank you for all you have done for us, uh, God, down through the years, uh, down through the months, oh God. Uh, God, through it all, you're yet good to us. Uh, through it all, you're watching over us. Uh, you're keeping us, oh God. You are protecting us. Uh, you are providing for us, oh God. Uh, all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And God, we thank you. We have no complaints, oh God. Nothing but praise and adoration in our hearts right now, God. We thank you for everyone, oh God, uh, that's hearing, oh God, from you this day. We thank you, God, for those that you are leading, those you are directing, those that you are guiding, those that are working for you, God, those that are committed unto you, God, those that are sacrificing. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you, oh God. We worship you. God, we adore you. We magnify you, God. We lift you up because you are God. Hallelujah. And besides you, Lord, there is no other God. Oh, my God. We thank you for healing right now, mentally, physically, spiritually and emotionally, dear God. We thank you, God, for how you're comforting those, uh, those that are going through bereavement, oh God. We thank you, God, for how you're making clarity this morning, how so many are looking to you, Lord, uh, trusting in you, uh, knowing that you are God, uh, and there is no failure in you, God. Uh, so many, oh God, uh, are resting in you right now, depending on you, trusting you, God, uh, and we thank you. We thank you for all you've done, uh, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We love you. We bless you. Pray, oh God, for everyone right now, no matter who they are, where they are, I lift them up before you in the name of Jesus, oh God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We worship and we adore you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen and amen.
The fourth Sunday of Advent is about love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has came into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. The scripture John 3, 16 through 19 means that God loved and cared about me so much that he sacrificed his son to watch over me. Not many people would do that. The scripture shows us that God would do anything for us. And that's why I praise and give him thanks every day. to God again for this last Sunday in 2020. God has been faithful. God has been true. And in spite of, in the midst of it all, and, and through it all, God is still God. And for that, we are ever grateful. Listen, I, 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 I really, this has become a, a, a funny uh, for all of us here, but I'm really not going to be long today. <laughs> but in this last Sunday, I believe that it's just... Um, there's something I want to share that's been on my heart this week um, from a passage of scripture that I've, I've preached from several times. I love this story, but there's just one aspect of it that I want to share on this last Sunday of 2020. So if you would uh, turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, and I just want to lift verses 15, 15 through... 17. 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, verses 15 through 17. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. When an attendant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. His servant said, Alas, master, what shall we do? He replied, do not be afraid, for there are more with us than there are with them. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. 
So the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words from my mouth and the med collective meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you're indeed our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. For that we say thank you. Now, O oh God, continue to speak and minister to us as only you can, for we need you like never before. It's in your holy and precious name we pray, and we say amen. Amen. This is a very familiar passage with the prophet Elisha, who we know was uh, the understudy of Elijah, Elijah and how Elisha was operative. And in this particular context of, of scripture, um, Elisha has been walking in his role and, um, and he made a powerful uh, enemy uh, with the king. Um, and the king wanted to send um, king of Amram and wanted to send his army to deal with and capture Elisha. And, you know, we know that role. Oftentimes when you're walking firmly, confidently, and boldly in your gift, in your, your call, in your assignment, that you're liable to make some powerful enemies. But, but as Elisha does, and uh, he, he shows us that when you're operating in your role, you're faithful to your role with God, then you don't waver at anything that may come your way. And that's part of where I want us to land for today. And it is a simple nuance, um, the interaction between Elisha and his, his servant. Because when, when the king of Aram sent uh, his soldiers down and, and they, they surrounded Elisha's house, right? And so here he is surrounded by the enemy, all because he was faithful to God. And, you know, he, he, it would look to the natural eye that there is no way out. And, and, and if you listen to his servant, I, I love the, the writing because it says, Alas, master, alas, master, what shall we do? Because the servant came out and saw exactly what, what you and I would technically see. The servant saw the reality on the ground. The servant saw the present circumstances. The servant saw how the conditions were unfavorable. The servant saw how they were outnumbered, how they were outweaponed, how they were outmaneuvered, how they, they were st uh, strategically surrounded. The servant saw that there was no way out. And so the only thing the servant could declare or express was, alas, master, what shall we do? It is over. There is no move for us. There is nothing that we could possibly do to get ourselves out of this situation. And so as many of us prepare for this next chapter of life, if God gives us life to see this next new year, many of us are, are on the verge, on the precipice of walking more boldly, walking more deeply in our faith with God, walking more deeply into the assignments that God has placed us in, walking more deeply into the vision that God has given us. And, and we are at that place where it is putting us at a point where it's almost reckless abandonment. That it, it's not logical. It doesn't make sense. It is beyond our scope. It is beyond our means. It is pushing us into uncomfortable territories, un uncomfortable spaces, spaces where we don't have the technical upper hand according to our own human ability. And, and in that I still want to encourage us to take that plunge, take that dive, to dive into whatever God is moving and calling us into, whatever God has prepared us for in this, throughout all of this year, to move boldly into this new season of our living. And we, like the servant of Elisha, would be looking at all of the surface circumstances and we get to the place where we look and we cry, alas, Master, last God, what, what shall we do? What can we do? And in that moment, I, I believe God is, is sharing with us, this ought to be our stance. And I don't know about you, this is going to be my stance. And this is going to be my prayer for all of us, all of you. Elijah, here's the concern of his servant Elijah understands where his servant is, but it does not necessarily phase Elijah. 
And I, I understood of this a different way this week. It doesn't phase Elijah, Elisha, because Elijah has been built. Elijah has been becoming. Elijah has, has grown and matured into who it is that God had purposed and created him to be. And so now you get a chance to see what the fruit is from Elisha who has become what God had purposed him to be. My God, I hope somebody gets that. There is fruit that at, at the end of the journey, or not even at the end, there's fruit that's part of the journey, uh, part of the work, the reward of working to become who God has purposed us to be. And, and in that, one of the greatest things that we can get is to be able to see as God sees, to see how God is actually building the path, building the journey, building our lives. Because there are things that are a part of our lives, people who are a part of our lives, connected to our lives, who we don't have any idea of how fully we need them, how fully they are going to be integrated into the purpose that God has prepared and destined us for because we don't know how to see. I think about my mom who loves to knit. And when I think about what the finished product looks like, my God, it, it, these are masterpieces, right? They're beautiful. The colors are so intricately woven together and it's, it's, it's fashioned together that, that all these separate pieces of yarn has now come together to produce a masterpiece. And, and that is the handiwork of God. See, oftentimes we don't know how, how God has orchestrated us because all we're doing is looking around and we're seeing yarn. We're seeing different strands of yarn, different colors of yarn, different strings of yarn that, that we don't know how it goes together. And so because we're looking with our own eyes, all we can see is the mess. All we can see is, is, is disorganized relationships. All we can see is, is, is impromptu re, uh, uh, connections. All we can see is things that don't really make sense to us. And because it doesn't make sense to us, we don't know how meaningful they are in our lives. And we can take for granted things that are purpose for us because we don't know how to see it. We don't know how in our becoming, our eyesight begins to shift. And in our becoming, as we get stronger and more bolder and more courageous and more intimate in our connection to God, our eyesight begins to shift and you begin to see the connections that God has placed around you. My God, oh God, I thought you just dropped me in this, petition, in this particular situation. I thought you just allowed me to journey into this particular space. But now as I'm becoming, now as I'm maturing, now as I have allowed myself to be faithful, to be obedient, to take steps, to walk with you, now I'm beginning to see that it was not by chance that I met a random person in this particular area. It wasn't by chance that I had this conversation with this person. It wasn't by chance that I came across this opportunity or this resource. Now you begin to see that there's more at work to what we deem as random. But God says this is all purpose. It has been fashioned to be a part of the fabric of your life. But you have to become, grow, mature in order to begin to see it. And I leave you with this on today. I told you I'm going to be short today because if you get this, I believe this is it that prepares us for the next chapter of our lives. Elijah prayed a prayer for his servant. Elijah said, oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Because when Elijah was faced with being surrounded by the army, it didn't faze him because Elijah was able to see not with his natural eyes, but to see with his eyes of faith. And through his eyes of faith, Elijah knew that there was more with him than there were against him. He knew a servant couldn't see it, and so he did the next best thing that anybody could ever do. Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And in faith today, I simply want to pray that prayer for those who may be in the same position as that servant was, those who are connected to the mission that God has purposed us to, those who are connected to the ministry that God has commissioned us 
to serve, to share, to present in this part of God's kingdom for those who are feeling that they need to be embarking upon something and they don't know how it connects and it has nothing to do with the church, but you feel like God is purposing you to step out, to launch out. Don't try to think that ministry only pertains to this building or to this ministry, but our lives are ministries. It's my prayer for you, oh Lord. Please open their eyes so that they may see. God, please open their eyes so that they might see. Open their eyes so they may stop taking for granted the people that you've placed in their lives. Open their eyes, oh God, so that they might stop being fearful, thinking that they're by themselves. Open their eyes, oh God, so that they might see that there are more with them than those that are against them. Open their eyes, oh God, so that they can see that they don't need to waste energy in dead spaces. Open their eyes, oh God, so that they might see how you have built them and how you have shaped their journeys and how you, oh God, continue to purpose their lives. That is my prayer for each and every one of us on this day. May this be the Sunday that God opens any closed eyes and that we could see the manifestation of all that God has positioned around us. But now when you see it, my God, don't get stuck in awe, looking and gazing. When you see it, may you be bold enough, courageous enough to launch, to go, to move, to walk. That's our call on today. My brother, my sister, wherever you are, if you have been bumping around your life, being dismayed, disappointed, disillusioned because you don't really understand how you have been and are being positioned, may this be the Sunday that you hear, your heart hears this prayer. Oh Lord, please open their eyes that they might see. Don't be afraid when you start to sense. If you pray that prayer, you receive that prayer, don't be surprised that, that you might see and sense a stronger connection to, to things, spaces, people that you've been taking for granted. Don't be surprised that it may push you into places where you have to swallow your pride and, and act in full humility in order to access that which God you have been desiring and praying and pleading for. And God says it's been there the whole time. It's around you, but you don't have the eyes to see it. That's you, my brother, my sister. Let us pray together so that this may be a new day for all of us as we leave this year and prayerfully, if God gives us life, enter into a new season as individuals, but also as a community. God, we thank you for this, your opportunity to remind us of who we are. Remind us, oh God, of the gift of sight that you give to those of us who are willing to be intimate and connected to you. God, may you allow us to heed your challenge, heed your call, to launch, to walk, to be bold, to have faith. God, we trust you. Where we have fear, strengthen us. Where we have doubt, build us. God, where we have a lack of belief, remind us. You're the same God who's been with us and the same God who will lead us. We love you, O oh God. We thank you. We trust you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say, amen. 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 Listen, we thank God for all of you being able to worship with us this last Sunday of 2020. May it be a call, a clarion call for us, not only as individuals, but as a community to launch into 2021 with a newfound boldness. And as we do, as we see, if God has connected you to this place, then let us all be full participants in our worship, but full participants in the life of this ministry. So many opportunities to serve, to volunteer, but also to sacrifice. Whatever you have, make it a sacrifice. If you're not a tither and God is pushing you, charging you, accept the challenge 
to make tithing your sacrifice so that we can all be together, not in the mounts, but all be together in our sacrifice. Whatever you have, let us give thanks to God for it. God, we thank you for these, your tithes and our offerings of sacrifice and love. Receive them, bless them, multiply O oh God, that we might be able to use them for the work that you've called us to. Help us to be good and faithful stewards over everything you so graciously give unto us. And it's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Lord's willing, we'll see you on the other side of the new year. Now let us join together and sing our closing song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. forever bless and always keep us. May he always raise his countenance and allow his face to forever shine upon us. May that same God continue to remind us to live boldly, to faith forward, and to always love unconditionally. From now until we meet again on the other side, where the sun neither rises nor sets, for the sun is Jesus the Christ, who's in the light of the world. It's in his name that we pray. Let all of God's children say, Amen.